Hi, this video is about free fall. In physics, we define free fall to be moving only under the influence of gravity. No other forces involved, just gravity. Now, because we defined it that way, that could mean more than just falling. When I think of things falling, I think of them moving down. But if an object is in free fall, it could be going up. If I, if I toss a ball upward and it continues to go up, but nothing is pushing it or stopping it, no air resistance, no rocket motors, nothing like that, then technically in the physics sense, it's still in free fall. So it could be going up or down or sideways. So don't get caught by um, that word fall and thinking that it always has to be down. The examples we're going to use today are moving down, but we'll see others soon that are moving up and sideways. And they're still, on, in, we're still in free fall, only under the influence of gravity. Now the strength of gravity depends on your location. Uh, on Earth it has a certain strength. On the moon it would have a smaller strength generally. On Mars, somewhere in between Earth and, Earth and the moon. But even on Earth itself, if you go to the uh, top of a high mountain, um, the gravitational force is a little bit less on top of that mountain than it is uh, near sea level on the Earth. So gravity depends on location. On Earth, near the surface, the free fall acceleration due to gravity is about 9.80 meters per second squared. Now it might be slightly more at sea level and slightly less at the top of a mountain, but that difference is usually only in this decimal place. So maybe 9.81 at sea level, maybe 9.78 or something on top of a mountain, but pretty close to 9.80 meters per second squared. That means if you, if you drop something, then every second that goes by, its speed will change by 9.8 meters per second. That's what that means to have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second, or 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's a number you definitely want to include on your equation card, on your toolbox, is, is that value for g on the Earth near the surface. It's okay to round g to about 10 meters per second squared. Uh, that makes the math calculations a bit easier and allows us to, to quickly identify um, changes in speed and, and distance. And that number, 10 meters per second squared, is actually used pretty extensively in the conceptual physics book by Paul Hewitt and also in AP physics classes. So kind of on both ends of the spectrum, uh, they do it. And for the same reason, uh, to make the calculations a little simpler. And today, I'm going to use that rounded value of g uh, as we're learning about free fall speeds and distances. So we'll use 10 meters per second squared today. If you drop an object, just drop it so it starts from rest, and it falls in free fall, uh, this table tells us how to calculate, or t uh, indicates, sorry, the, the time of fall in second intervals, one, two, three, and four, and five seconds, and then what the speed would be at each time. So you can see at time zero, we have zero speed, at one second, we have 10 meters per second. At two seconds, we gain another 10 meters per second because the acceleration is 10 meters per second per second. And 330 and 440 and 550. Now, we can do those in our head pretty quickly, but some people like to see the equation, uh, uh, how you would use an equation to solve for those speeds as well. And that equation that you would use would be this acceleration equation, uh, final velocity minus original velocity over time. If you rearrange that and solve that equation for final velocity, it becomes VO plus AT. The final velocity is the original velocity plus that acceleration times the time. So for us, that original is zero. The acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. And so if I plug in, say, uh, six seconds, we can find the velocity after six seconds, and that would be 60 meters per second. You can also make the table and just add 10 and add 10 and add 10, whichever you, want, uh, you find useful. Well, that's good, but what about how far it's fallen after each second? That's a different matter, and sometimes students get a little uh, frustrated at this because it's not as simple. <laughs> it's just not as simple. So I've repeated the table again, and uh, I'd like you to copy this table down, or maybe you can just extend your table in your notes so that you add a third column. And that third column is total distance fallen. And of course, at zero time, it would fall zero distance. At one second, many people assume that it would fall 10 meters because it's going 10 meters per second after one second. But what students that think that get confused about 
is that it's not going 10 meters per second the entire second that it falls. Remember, it starts at zero and it speeds up to 10 meters per second. So in between, it had all the velocities between zero and 10 meters per second. And uh, so it turns out that it only falls five meters in that first second. It doesn't fall 10. Now, you can solve for that in two ways. In two ways. You can solve for the distance in two ways. One way is using what I like to do. I kind of, because I do it in my head, but some people like to write it down too, and I would encourage you to do that, is to use the average velocity. So I'm looking at the fifth one, say after five seconds. This is how to solve it for um, total distance after five seconds. And there are two ways. And the first way is this average velocity way. And you would find the average velocity between the starting velocity, which is zero, and the final velocity, which is 50. And so that average is 25 meters per second. And for how much time did it spend falling that average speed? Well, it spent five seconds falling that average speed. So we use this equation to find the average speed and this equation to find the distance once we know the average speed. And so um, the average is 25 meters per second for five seconds, so it falls 125 meters. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to use this uh, power tool equation that we derived the other day. So <clears throat> that's a dis distance, an original speed, and acceleration there. And so we can plug in the values for the original speed, which was zero, the time five seconds, one half of 10 meters per second squared is our acceleration, that's g rounded, and then five seconds squared. Well, zero times anything is zero. Uh, one half times 10 is five, and five squared is 25, and so we have five times 25, and we get 125 meters once again. Whichever method you like, I would like whichever method you prefer, and you can try them both on different ones. I want you to try to fill out the rest of the table. So we just filled out <clears throat> um, five meters for one second, 125 meters down here. You fill out the other three and see if you can get them correct uh, on your own. Go ahead and pause the video at this point because the next slide is, is the answers. So good luck. <laughs>